shine, Jesus shine. Uh, quick question for you. As we, uh, if you've got your Bibles, turn with me over to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, that's going to be our, uh, our text. And I appreciate Jaden reading that earlier. And uh, so we're just kind of uh, kind of hang out there for a minute. We're going to go through that. But I got a question for you. So as you come up on this time of year, all right, so, you know, we, we uh, uh, the, the weather starts turning colder and, you know, you're, uh, for the guys or, or whoever, we're, uh, you know, we're wondering when that, when that last mow is going to happen, you know, it's like, all right, is it, you know, and it, it's, is it cold enough for me to mow and then it's not going to grow again? And then all the things that go along with this time of year and the, and the buying of the presents and everything. But the big question is, when is it okay to turn on the radio or walk into a store and hear Christmas music? When, it, when is that okay? Is, is it after, I mean, because now it's, like, it gets earlier and earlier every year, doesn't it? I mean, it seems like, you know, used to, you wouldn't hear any Christmas, you wouldn't even see any decorations in stores until after Thanksgiving. You know, we could have Thanksgiving, and it was all pumpkins and cornucopias and, and, uh, and squash and all that and turkeys, and then all that went away, and about a week after Thanksgiving, you had Christmas show up. Well, now, I mean, you're trick-or-treating and people are putting lights up on their house. I, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it, in, in a couple of years, it's just going to be 4th of July Christmas, 4th of July Christmas. But when, now, it seems like right after, right after Halloween, you start hearing Christmas songs, don't you? You start going into stores uh, and, uh, um, you know, and, and now, let me ask you this. I got into... Uh, I was at Schnooks the other day and listening to the uh, uh, the, the song uh, up above, you know, the playing. When 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 did did Brian Adams become grocery store music? Are we that old now? Is that what I used? That used to be like Bing Crosby and you know Mel Torme. Now it's like Elton John and Brian. I'm like what? This should be, you know, Bach or Beethoven, something super old. Not what I grew up listening to, but I digress. Like, yeah, you do that a lot. But so now you go into a store, you hear Christmas music right away. But that just reminds us about how important songs are. Because nothing reminds you of Christmas. Nothing puts you in the Christmas spirit. And that's just some kind of magical thing out there, the Christmas spirit, isn't it? Nothing does that like the songs that are associated with Christmas. I mean, it really does, you know, we, it, you know and it might not right at the beginning, you know, like the first time at like, you know, 15 minutes after, after Halloween's over and you start hearing it, it might, it, it might take you a minute. But when you hear that first, here come the bells, there are the bells, da, 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 da. When you, as soon as you hear that, you know, oh, it's on. And it, it's just going to, over, over time, you're going to really get into it. Next thing you know, you're just dashing through the store. Da, 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 da. I mean, it just gets you, doesn't it? It just grabs a hold of you and, and puts that smile on your face. Or, or it just brings that impending dread of, oh, all the people are coming and all the gifts I've got to get bought. and all, Whatever the Christmas season is to you, the songs are one of the things that really bring it home for you. Really make it Christmassy. And, and that's, that's not by accident. You know, one of the things that... that um, that it fascinates me is the fact that whenever you're reading scripture, it, it's it's easy to see that you know, and and here we are as as we're struggling with our technology and and all that and the the programs and and yada yada and all that. But these guys back there, they're doing serious open heart surgery on the uh, on the stuff. But God understands how we are programmed. God, God wrote the, the code that is, that is us and is us and how we, how we operate and, and what, you know, what really gets us. And song is something, music is something that really speaks to us. 
it really gets somewhere down deep in our emotions, in our psyche, and, and brings out things from within us. I mean, there are songs that you could hear right now that will take you, you know, take you back to, uh, immediately take you back to high school, like high school prom or, or, or some, uh, you know, some event, you know, some song they, they sung at, at a, a football game or, or, you know, something like that. I mean, music takes us places. Why do you think Paul was singing in prison? He wanted music to take him somewhere else, and it did. It, it takes our, our hearts and our, our emotions and, and our feelings other places. Song is so important. And so for the next three weeks, we're going to be talking about the sounds of Christmas, the songs of Christmas. We're going to look at Zechariah's song. We're going to look at Mary. We're going to look at the angels singing because it is the songs that can usher us into what the season is all about. And um, the first thing that, uh, you know, as we are beginning to sound a lot like Christmas and, and looking at Zechariah's prophecy and, uh, through his song, sounds of, of the coming Savior, they, they sound a whole lot like a saving purpose. Because when, when Zechariah is seeing the realized Savior, the, the child Savior that, is, that, that comes before him, that remember he has been waiting on, others have been waiting on, and as we talked about last week, you know, hurry up and wait, and, and being, you know, there's a big difference between just standing around in case something happens and actually waiting. You know, they, they were waiting, they were anticipating, they were knowing themselves and knowing look for and all of those things. finally happens Zechariah can't help but proclaim the purpose of this visit by the by the Savior you know the the thing about it that we we lose in in all of the tinsel and the presents and the wrapping and the bows and the trees and the lights and all of that at this time of year is the the real purpose for the visit you know because this time you know we're, we're all about visiting now right and the visit that that is in question here that's being sung about is not for nothing you know Jesus didn't just show up to to check on things and to see how things were going he didn't just come here you know because he wanted to to, to see what was going on he knew what was going on and, and he knew the the condition that we were in and it wasn't good it was a lost and dying situation and part of the, the, the praise and part of the, the jubilation from, from Zechariah was the, the saving purpose. Because in verse 68, he talks about, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. The, the message that he couldn't help but proclaim was that of redemption. The price has been paid. He has provided redemption. There, the, you know, the thing that, that Zechariah is so excited about is that the redemption is here and it is paid for. There is no bill that's coming due in January. You know, because that's part of the stress of, of, of all this, that, you know, you go and you, you, you buy all the presents and you, you have just such a holly jolly Merry Christmas, and then what happens? January happens, you get that credit card statement. Like, oh, now it's time to pay for all this. Well, you know, early in, in our marriage and with kids, you know, Vic and I, we did that, that very thing. But later, you know, now we're kind of a little bit smarter. It's funny how age will do that to you. And you get a little bit smarter, and so you kind of save up. And then, but the, what Zechariah is so excited, there is no bill due later. The price is paid. He says, he has raised up a horn of salvation. The price is paid, and the power for that is his. We do not, we do not accept any, any uh, uh, accolades or, or any praise for anything regarding salvation. He has paid the price, and the power for that is all his. The praise is all about God. The, the victory is certain. In verse 72 and seven, or 71 and 72, he says, he's come to redeem according to what he promised. As we sit here in 2023, millennia away from the life of Christ, the promise 
is still as valid today as it was then. But do we sing about that? And I'm not talking about in the, you know, in, the, in the books or up on the screens, you know, here in church. Do, do we sing about in our hearts, in our, in our emotions, does, it, does the promise, do we count on the certainty of the promise of the empty tomb? But, but that is the promise that we are, are counting on, that we are banking on, that, that, that we are waiting on. And is it real enough for us today for song to, to come from us, from, for our lives to be a, a, a song of praise, for our emotions to, to burst forth with, with songs of praise because we know for sure we're not you know it's not like i'm you know our hope isn't like i hope i get what i asked for for christmas because i don't know about you guys but but for the most part i i was able to disappoint my kids over and over again because what they hoped for never came you know now one of the things that i i told one of my daughters was that well it would really been helpful if you had told me that because you know they're hoping but they're not telling anyway but what we desperately want from God is certain. How does that make us feel? Do, do we dwell on that? Do we meditate on that? Do we wait on that? Are we preparing ourselves for the certainty of the salvation, of the redemption? Because that is something to sing about. Not only does Christmas sound a whole lot like a, a like God's saving purpose. But Christmas sounds a lot like transformation. In 74, he talks, in verse 74, he talks about our, our spiritual transformation. We're delivered from the hands of our enemies that we might serve and serve him without fear. Uh, we, we become, because of the redemption that, that showed up in Jesus, we now have a, a transformative reality where we are now able to serve. Whereas before, before the, the, the coming of Christ, before the redemption of his people, we were not worthy to serve. We were still cloaked and, and, and smothered in sin. But now, he says, we, we are transformed to serve. We are able to serve. We are, we are given purpose. Not only is there a purpose to him coming, but his Coming gives us purpose, and something even even way more exciting than that, because service, having a role to play in the kingdom, is is one thing. But having a role to play in the kingdom, the way that we have roles to play in the kingdom, is a complete and total different thing. You know, was uh, um, growing up in my house, there were certain things that you know you had to do. You know, there were, your chores were, were your, you know, you, what you did. And, and there were specific and real and, and uh, um, you know, significant consequences for not doing what you were given to do. And so a lot of times, when, what I would do is, is I would do my chores. I would do the things that I was called to do or, or tasked to do. What, I would do them out of spite a lot of times i would do them out of out of anger out of uh out of all you know but mainly out of fear of what would happen if i didn't do them can you relate to that can you relate to to us you know doing things that are necessary to be done but doing them because what would happen to you if you don't but see what the, what the coming of Jesus does for us. The transformations, not only a, a, a spiritual transformation where, where we are able, you know, God has given us things to do and, and empowered us within his kingdom, but it's an emotional transformation because now we are able to serve without fear. And that's a whole big fat difference. You know, one of the things that, that uh, uh, is, is fun to watch as, as kids grow 
and they start to learn, you know, because when your kids are little, you know, I love you, I love you, you know, and, and then when they start to learn what that means and when you see your sons, you know, see their mother needing something and, and they race to do it. They, they can't get up off the couch quick enough to go and serve and to do for and to take that. Hey, let me help you carry this. Let me do that. Because of this emotional maturity that they have. And, and they serve out of love, not out of fear. They serve because, you know, because that person is so important to me. And their comfort is so important. And their, you know, their enjoyment a lot. And so it's, all, it's out of love. It's out of protection. It's out of all of those things. But it has nothing to do with fear. Can we say that about our, our service to God? You know, when we are, uh, you know, do we have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, through the, the incarnate word, through the, the, uh, uh, the, the revelation of who and what and how God is, because that's what Jesus is. He is a physical representation of God, and so all of the mercy, all of the grace, all of the compassion, all of the love that you see in Jesus, that's exactly how God wants to treat us. And how he, that's exactly how he wants us to see him, the all-powerful, almighty God, as loving and merciful and understanding. Because of Jesus, we, he didn't say, okay, you can, you, you, you can now stop the fear. What Jesus reveals is that you never had anything to fear in the first place. Now, don't get that twisted with fear of the Lord and all that. He's talking about awe and respect. I'm talking about being scared of. And you know the difference. You know the difference of, of you know, oh my goodness, dad's going to be home. We better hurry up and do this. Oh, oh my, oh, yeah. Or and, uh, of, of just enjoying the, the, the work and the task and the purpose because I can't wait for him to get home and see what I've done for him. Christmas sounds like transformation, not only spiritual, but emotional. We can serve, and we can serve without fear, but also Christmas sounds a lot like hope. Does the song that we sing, does it, is it a song of hope? And in verse uh, 78 and 79, he talks about the dawn is broken, or, or uh, the, uh, uh, yeah, dawn has broken, and so there's a you know, impending doom. And when that first ray of sunshine breaks through, have you ever been up super early in the morning? I mean, I've been up late, late at night. And sometimes those, those merge. Have you ever been up super early in the morning? And it kind of gets, it, it, you know, when the sun's starting to come up and it sort of just starts to get a little bit light, but, but the dawn hasn't broken yet. You know, you haven't, those first rays haven't really come over the horizon. And then when it does, it is awe-inspiring. I mean, there's something gorgeous about a sunset, but there's something inspiring about a sunrise because of the, the newness because of the, uh, the, the excitement of a new day. But he says the dawn is broken and the darkness has lifted. Do we realize, does this time of year in, invoke within us a, a celebration because there was a darkness. There, there was a, a, a darkness that... that relentless and... and love for us his passion for his creation because of him there is now light it says the dawn is broken the darkness is lifted and the days are filled with peace and i don't know about you but i am smart enough to watch the news there's not a lot of peace going on right now is there so so how can this song still be true how can this still ring true for us? How can we, like, like Zechariah, sing a song saying, now, because of Jesus, there is peace. All our days are filled with peace because he's not talking about peace between people. He's saying there is peace between us and God. And that's the only peace that matters. 
That's the only piece that matters. But here's, here's the, 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 the reality that I want us all thinking about, not only today, but this week and through this season. Do you, I mean, do you re- are you really at peace with God? Or are you still fighting for position? Are you still wrestling for uh, 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 some of that salvation away from him? This Christmas, can we have peace? Knowing that salvation is secured. Redemption, it, it, the price is paid. There's nothing left on the bill. There, there's nothing left for us to do other than thank God. For his saving grace and celebrate the life that he has left us here to live celebrate this life this life that's that that yeah it's got trials and tribulations it's got ups and downs and heartaches and sorrows and all of those things but the one thing that it doesn't have the one thing that it doesn't have is war between us and God because there's peace there is peace if we will accept it if we will accept the role and sing the glories of our God that that he has done it all we are left to enjoy and to live that redeemed life for all to see we're going to have a, an invitation song. Now, I want everybody to do me a favor. If everybody's songbook's in the, in, the, in the little thing, in the trough, no, no, put them all back, put them back, put them back. Put your songbook in the thing. This is the sound of the sermon being over when I grew up. Because when you would say, and we're going to sing a song, everybody would do the grab your book out all at the same time. One, two, yeah, everybody get your hand on your book and get ready to grab it out. One, two, three. Oh, there it is. Oh, we're back home, baby. It's 1987. We're back at church. We're going to sing a song, and we're going to look in the books like Amish people. And, uh, but we're going to sing it. Can we sing? Sing to the Lord, for he is good. Will you join me as together we stand and sing to God?